the longest 20 seconds. Missy was the Geary 38 Express driver whose ugly orange ramshackle bus I boarded most often before 6 every morning in the outer Richmond. Missy never showed much interest in the process of breaking her long rolling dragon of public transit so that whenever she did make a squealing last second stop, it was a memorable exercise in balance and forgiveness. I was never late for work, though frequently experienced neck pain, which led to many a sleepless night. One morning at a stop in the deep loin on O'Farrell Street, the commuter who had been sardine next to me in the back, a petite elderly Asian woman, was unlucky enough to have the last turn at the exit when the hydraulics governing the opening and closing of the bus back door snapped around her ankle, and I could see the old woman's purse leaving behind pens, applicators, cigarette lighters, and change bouncing behind her on the asphalt as the departing bus dragged her screeching, flailing form. I joined a group of passengers screaming, Stop! and pounding up the length of the shifting bus, only to be met by Missy's, I don't stop for no goddamn late fare skippers. To this day, I don't have an actual memory of Missy's stopping. Yet our commute ended shortly thereafter with an ambulance ride for a moaning Chinese woman and a transfer or walk for everyone else. The newspaper said Missy had been on her second DMV suspension for the last nine months. The paper further reported the victim was pulled at least 100 feet but was in stable condition and released from the hospital a day later. Thanks to the archaic municipal bus union's archaic appeals process, I got to take one more ride with Missy later that week, and she wasn't much interested in the process of breaking on that ride either. I never saw Missy again after that, but the following week I was late to work and slept great for the first time in years, but you know, I miss Missy. <laughs> and another short short starring O'Farrell Street. The serve well. It all starts with me coming home from my telemarketing gig off the BART station at 11 every night per always on up the Hyde Street wind tunnel to the corner liquor store, i.e. the serve well, for a quart of milk and a can of raviolis, when at Ellis Street, a brother in front of me the size of a brick shithouse strolls three paces into Hyde and then whirls back around at the sound of some shit talk and the shattered bark of a 40 ounce or smacking off sidewalk. Another brother, further on down Ellis Street, throwing down the corner liquor store gauntlet. Two young men about to get it on in the heart of the tenderloin, and adrenaline ripples out from the intersection, flowing downhill, rolling uphill, crawling toward the back of every alleyway, and it's all going down in front of the Servwell Market, and I gotta go, <laughs> yes siree, I gotta get myself right the fuck across this here street, right across the... Right up the block, and never in my life have I been so happy to see the gorgeous desolation of O'Farrell Street, where pistol shots don't sound like they do in the movies. But are a pop, pop, pop percussion leaking around street corners, boxing my ears while I hold in against a wall. And there, a darker, older sister with canyon deep wisdom etched in her handsome jawbone says, Aw, shit. Fools are gonna be dealing out, they dying just before she takes a ginormous rip off of a tiny glass pipe and grips my shoulders while throwing her left leg around my waist, thrusting her tongue deep into my tonsils, and her coke washed ENJ flavored crack hail fills my sinuses, leaving me heated, swollen, and eager, leaving me wanting nothing more than to pull this smooth slab of loving electric carboplasm deep inside me until I have somehow consumed her but my ears pulse with the bastard cosmic hum of the ether and the distant pop, pop, popping which caresses me warm, safe and sexy in the piss-baked concrete smell of O'Farrell, where I dream the creamy dreams of the possible for a period of time I cannot measure, but which only ever ends with me prone and alone in front of the stark, steely gray judgment that is the entrance gate to my apartment building, miraculously with keys, wallet, and change somehow still in place, miraculously with my cock still dry and comfortably secured inside dry boxers, comfortably secured inside zipped up Levi's, miraculously with the sickly orange streetlight Paul of O'Farrell completely abandoned and every storefront bolted down till daylight, including, I am quite certain, my quart of milk and can of, can of raviolis inside the Servo Market. Thank you.